This is part 44 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing delete operation on our list component. Along the way, we'll discuss passing data from child component to parent component. On this list page, we actually have two components, employee list component and display employee component. So if we take a look at our employee list component, notice the main responsibility of this component is to retrieve the list of employees and then loop through each employee within that list. And then it is the display employee component's responsibility to display each employee information. So this display employee component is nested within employee list component. So this display employee component is the child component and employee list component is the parent component. And as we are looping through the list of employees, we pass each employee object to the display employee components. And then it is the responsibility of the display employee component to delete the respective employee record when the delete button is clicked. So upon deleting the employee record, this child component, that is our display employee component, must notify the parent component, in our case, employee list component. So it can remove the respective employee record from the display. So there is definitely a need for the child component to communicate with the parent component. Now, implementing the delete operation itself is straightforward. We already discussed this in our previous video. So within our child component, that is this display employee component, I'm going to replace this anchor element with a button element because when we click this delete button, we want to call a method in our component class. So let's wire up on click event handler. The method that we want to call is delete underscore click. We don't have this method in our component class yet, so let's create it. To be able to delete employee record, we need employee service. So let's inject it into this component. Bring in the required namespace. On this injected employee service, we have delete employee method. To this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee that we want to delete. And for that, we can use this employee property. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice when I click the delete button, nothing happens. We don't see any visible change. But then when I reload this page, notice what happens to Mary Smith record. It's gone. Let's understand what's going on. When we click this delete button, we are actually deleting the respective employee record from the database. But then our parent component, that is this employee list component, does not know that an employee record is deleted, so it can update its display. There are two ways to fix this. One way is to force reload this employee list component from the server again after the employee record is deleted. We already discussed how to do this in our previous videos. So to force reload a component, we need navigation manager service. Let's inject that first into our component. And then within the delete event handler, after the employee record is deleted, we want to redirect the user to the employee list component. The most important thing is to pass a value of true for this second parameter force load. Now let's scroll to the bottom of the page and notice what happens to this scroll position and to this employee when we click this delete button. There we go. The respective employee record is deleted, which is good. But then we have a full page refresh. And as a result, we saw the screen flickering. And then we also lost the scroll position. There's a better way to do this. Instead of force reloading employee list component from the server, when an employee record is deleted by our child component, that is this display employee component, we want to notify the parent component, that is our employee list component, so it can update its display. To communicate from the child component to parent component, we use custom events. We discussed creating custom events using event callback in part 28 of this video series. So just like how we have created this custom event on employee selection, let's create another custom event. On employee deleted, after the employee record is deleted, we want to raise this new custom event. And to the custom event, we are passing the ID of the deleted employee as the event payload. We no longer need this line, so let's comment it. Next, 
within our parent component class, we need an event handler method to handle this custom event on employee deleted. So within the component class, let's include an event handler. Our child component is passing the ID of the deleted employee as the event payload to our custom event on employee deleted. To keep this example simple, I'm not going to do anything with the deleted employee ID, so I just ignored it. But then you can use it for any display purpose if you want to. For example, if you want to display a message, employee with ID equals 101 deleted. Now, the logic within this method is pretty straightforward. All it's doing is retrieving the list of employees again from the server and populating this employee's property to which our view is bound to. All that is left to do is wire up our custom event with the event handler. With all these changes in place, let's take one final look at the browser. Notice the scroll position, we're at the bottom of the page and when we delete this test employee, there we go. Notice how smooth it is. We don't have all those issues. First of all, we don't have the full page refresh. As a result, we don't have that annoying screen flicker and we also retained our scroll position. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.